Uh, today, oh, well. uh, we're uh, going to do some uh, social uh, exploration. We're going to look at uh, social metrics and measurement and uh, try and pick up a few tips about how to use social to build your uh, community and, and brand. Uh, this week, uh, the guests are uh, my buddy from the uh, regulator show, Justin Parts is here with us. And uh, Justin, uh, in, now I've introduced you, tell us what you got to say there, brother. What's the good word today? I'm going to swear now, you do realize that, just to prepare you. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been shite time. so far, to be honest, an absolute crap fucking day. So hopefully this will tie it up nicely and make it sweet. There you go. Grand, so. Yeah, for sure. <coughs> oh, okay. am I meant to talk about SEO or something yeah. then? No. Pardon me? <laughs> am I meant to talk about SEO or something intelligent now? No. Oh, okay. I'll We're doing wait, social wait today. That, uh, SEO is the other program there, Justin. Yeah, no, but I don't want to talk about social. Okay. <laughs> well, that's what you do, isn't it? No. Oh, okay. I haven't done social in years, man. Oh, okay. You were the one who showed me how to do it. Anyhow, <laughs> moving on, uh, we have uh, Marjorie Steele from Creative Onion. Correct, uh, Marjorie? Uh, ish. I mean, I am Creative Onion. My official yeah. business name is Creative Web Business, but I'm actually in-house right now and am not officially contracting. So <clears throat> I, I am Creative Onion. You can say that. I know oh. that feeling. <laughs> right? <laughs> Oh, all day long. Creative, anyhow. Right, something like that. Yeah. Is it because you make your clients cry? Is that what creative... <laughs> Quite frankly. Um, Is that what the onion thing's about, like? It's because I get so many creative questions like that about what my name means. I just like hearing people interpret what they think creative onion means. Um, I guess my, my poetry background... Uh, it makes me appreciate how different people can interpret it different ways. I don't know. So it means whatever it means to you. Onions make me cry. <laughs> okay there, uh, Justin. I'm kind of supposed to be in charge here, so. You know. Go for it. Okay, well, it's hard with you. you you're the star of every show you're in. Uh, let, uh, I guess also the, the next guest uh, is uh, Adele, and I keep saying this wrong. It's Tiblier. Yes. Very good. That's uh, I have a little bit of French being from Canada, so well, I originally thought it was Triblier. Oh no, no, no more at the front, just at the end. Oh, right. So I uh, changed that. Uh, it was spelt wrong everywhere. I had to go back and fix it all. So well, tell I us a little bit that. about yourself, Adele. Um, as you mentioned earlier, I've been in um, online marketing since I guess ninety five, ninety six. Uh, I'm in-house now for the largest 3D model marketplace in the world. So we're a two-sided market, so we, we have a lot of social outreach. Uh, I do all the SEO as well, but social with an emphasis on the SEO side. We do a lot of outreach to our artists, which are all over the world, about 16,000 of them. And then we have about 2 million customers. So it, it's, a, it's an interesting blend of conversation and content based on which market we have to sort of stroke the ego of today or tomorrow. It, 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 I've never heard it put better. <laughs> <laughs> stroke that ego. Let's, change it. Let's not call it social anymore. Let's just call it's, it stroke the ego stroke media. It's stroke optimization, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my, um, that's my spiel. But technical SEO, you mentioned earlier, I don't know how many folks were on when we were chatting about it. You have to you have to learn the code and learn all the pieces because no one else seems to understand how to do it, especially back in the 90s, mid-90s when it, everything sort of started. So you just had to pick up the ball and run with it whenever you could and however you could had to be and a see what worked. That's it. You had to be everything. So yeah. well, I'm actually on vacation today, so pardon me. Uh, yeah, exactly. Servers. There was no GA. There was no, keyword research was a gleam in our eyes. Yeah. Uh, so moving on, uh, seem to have uh, Justin uh, fixated here. Uh, I'm anyhow, sleeping. <laughs> trying to figure out how you remove this camera thing. Uh, I guess you don't. 
Uh, so uh, when you're uh, measuring your uh, social, the hardest thing I've found is to find real things that are really measurable and are, are going to measure what your uh, your activity for the business. Uh, and that's how you kind of uh, uh, make the budget uh, feasible. <laughs> I guess that was the word I was looking for. Uh, for me, that's been very tough. Well, mainly because I think social is just a bunch of smoke and mirrors anyhow, but that's just my personal opinion. I was late to the game, and Justin taught me all I knew, so there we go. Uh, That's why he's so good at it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Adele, you have any uh, thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I agree that it is a lot of smoke and mirrors. I, I think that there there are some valuable metrics on the back end. I, uh, people that sort of tote themselves as social <laughs> media experts only and don't really dabble in the other, uh, you know, the full circle of online marketing. I think that they focus on um, sort of bullshit metrics like followers and tweets and you know, it, and that's all crap to me. I don't care how many followers I have. If if the message and the content is good and it gets carried to other distribution methods, then fabulous. And if it brings more people back to the site, even better. And if I can show that those people came to the site and they did one of two things, they either publish content or they actually purchase something that we offer then that's that's the only two metrics I really need um, other than that we just like to keep the voice out there and then putting links and everything even with no follows it really doesn't matter I still like to have links and everything needs to draw back to the site and whatever it is that I want to push that day or, or that we have um, whatever we have sort of a, a focus on pushing so uh, more than anything I use it as a link building I use it as content marketing um, and then in the hopes that we can get a few more people to see who we are if they happen to be in this space and they happen to be the audience that we would like to reach, great. Otherwise, it's just another tool in the kit. It's, you know, it's the tiny screwdriver that you can only use every once in a while to open the bottom of a computer, but it's a tool that I, I use regularly. I don't see a lot of value in it, but... Um, I've seen increased value. Um, I can I can tell you now. I hate Pinterest. I think it's ridiculous. But <laughs> Steve think it's, makes a living off of Pinterest. Uh, a lot of people do. A lot of people do. But for for B two B, and that's what I'm. What mm. right now I specialize in. I don't see a huge focus on it now. If I was selling something, you know, to. <clears throat> Housewives in Tennessee, then yeah. by all means, tattoos. Pinterest is exactly where, yeah, tattoos and crafts, great. But other than that, it's just not my thing. Yeah. And uh, Marjorie, your your thoughts on uh, social signals and uh, metrics that you use there? Well, you know, I'm in a little bit of a unique situation. Uh, like Adele, I used to specialize mostly in B2B, uh, have worked a lot with manufacturers. Um, I was in an ad agency for about six, or I'm sorry, I was in a development agency for about six months, about six months ago, um, but I've really been focusing on my in-house position here at 616, and our focus since about 2010 has been primarily brand building, and um, we have used almost exclusively social and online um, digital efforts to, to build that as we've had more projects. Um, PR has come into play and has helped us out a lot. But the truth is that um, to this day, we actually only have fewer than 60 residents, but we have a tremendous following. Um, we have, we have uh, over 500 follow followers on Facebook, which isn't that big, um, but considering the fact that we only have about 60 residents, it's decent, and our Twitter following is, um, is significant. But, you know, we don't really look at, I mean, we look at the numbers, and those are always nice and, and shiny to bring to my my boss and say, look, you know, our numbers went up this month as they should every month. But the really big thing that we have been working on and that we keep an eye on is brand building. And that's pretty much exclusively what we have used social for. Um, so we have paid much more attention to the conversation, to our audience, to who is attracted to our message, um, what kinds of messaging 
uh, create engagement, what conversations people are interested in talking about, and then we capitalize that to obviously increase engagement by having conversations that um, our audience finds interesting. And, and 616, my, my current in-house position, is, is interesting because we have a B2B arm of the company, which is development, and then we have a B2C arm of the company, which is property management. It's so we get to dabble in both of those, but we have found that keeping an eye on brand engagement and really looking at the conversation and topics and um, who the key influence and influencers in our audience are and how they are engaging with us, um, those are the things that we've found to be most valuable. And in a few short years, um, we've built a really, really prominent brand here in the city that, that we're pretty proud of. So does that answer your question? Yeah. Uh, Justin, your thoughts? Uh, I know you do. You you don't say you do social, but I know you look at it. And, no, I no, yeah. I do. I've, I do it. I don't do it so much personally anymore. It's more again for the business because I'm yeah. I'm focused so much on the the semi in house role. Um, but I still come up against the the horrible, horrible show that it has value to the guys that sign the checks. Yeah. Um, and no matter what we do, and no matter what we've tested. The only way that any social channel has proven to be worthwhile is to pay for it, and by that I mean like, like Facebook advertising. I mean we we don't spend a lot of time, you know, writing tweets and looking for ways to engage people because it doesn't really suit our market either. I think we we learned that the hard way by trying for ages and just getting no result, but we found that we couldn't we could find the people who wanted to purchase the product by paying for the advertising. So that just worked. So we, we went with it. But what we found that really, really worked well for, for the guys I'm with, which is a manufacturer in Canada, was customer support. Um, and just saying to people, look, this is another way you can get to this. You got a problem, you got a question, you want to do this or you want to do that. We got massive engagement from that. And then they dropped the program because they just didn't have the resources to keep, to keep it up to scratch. So, yeah. social and social's brilliant if you can find a way to make it work. That's the hardest part. But you've got to go through every hoop and jump up and down and, and have the arguments and, you know, the big long winded conversations to try and prove that it works every single time, I think. And every new one that comes out, like you were saying there about Pinterest, you know, as soon as it hits it right, okay, we have to try it, we have to test it, we have to do this, we have to spend the time on it. And go from there. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, it's got a place. I just don't think it's as big a place as what people thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's just a, a small segment of the big pie. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. One of the uh, tools that is out there. I'm a big uh, believer that in if you're going to do social media. You have to measure influence properly, and you have to look at uh, influencing as actual influence, not uh, measuring reach, which is every tool that said it measures influence actually measures reach, and uh, maybe if you're lucky, lucky amplification. Uh, one of my favorites to pound the kick around on this one is club uh, their influence is total <laughs> crap bulls and what comes out of the and the opposite end of bulls is what it is because uh, what they're actually measuring is uh, reach so to use what is uh, how do you actually try and measure influence uh, Adele, you, have you had any experience with that measuring influence? For us, it's really more finding people that are active in the communities that we need to be or, or have conversations within. I find that those people, whether they post on a regular basis or not, if they're people that others seem to comment on, that they have influence. It's not about the numbers. It's about their activity within that community. And sometimes those communities are very, very small. Um, that's one thing I have loved about the Google Plus side of things. Those communities, I think, are easier to reach. It's easier for me to sort of seed uh, 
content into the communities and see where it goes, but I also can see the return from that from the SEO side because I'm seeing more clicks coming from it because it's showing up because lo and behold Google loves Google um, they're not really fans of Facebook and Twitter granted it shows up <laughs> it's but, not a fact you know I mean, it's just obvious to me if you're gonna this, put, this woman's a master of understatement <laughs> it's just it's obvious you know people are oh, oh put your videos on Vimeo put your stuff on you know Flickr I'm like no put that crap on things that Google owns and keyword the hell out of it and they're like why um because Google owns it just yeah. it's obvious but people don't see the obvious and they're still trying to play with whatever the flavor of the week is but if you've got an influencer in one area generally the influencer will also carry that message across multiple platforms so you don't have to chase them across multiple social channels you give it to them in one place if it's good they'll carry it to their community across all of the channels they're in and then they do the work and you don't have to but you reap the benefit uh, Marjorie you we're uh, agreeing with Adele there. What, uh, what do you think of that? Oh, um, I, I mean, obviously, from my vigorous nodding, I um, <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more. <clears throat> um, I think that people often try to uh, jump on board the latest flavor of the week and put everything on all space. Oh, you know, Vimeo is a place where we can share video. Let's put it there, too. Um, so I think that knowing your audience and knowing where they're actually having conversations and then making your time efficient by only spending time there is really important. I mean, knowing your audience is obviously the number one rule to, to any kind of marketing. Um, in terms of really getting engagement, I think that, that, well, there are benefits to doing social media management in-house because um, you have more depth, you have more um, opportunity to interact with your sales team, with your customer service team, which I think can be a tremendous asset in measuring real engagement because the truth is that, you know, the online space is not the only area that you find evidence of engagement. In fact, the, the truth is that the best way to find out how you're really engaging your community is to actually literally talk to them. Um, so a few ways that I have found um, to be able to manage that uh, pretty difficult task. You know, I, I work pretty closely with my with my boss, with the owner of the company, on the B2B end of things. So he gives me feedback directly about email newsletter content, you know, what resonated well, what didn't, because people actually contact him directly. Um, and the same goes for our customer service side of things. You know, I regularly check in with our customer service team and ask them what people are talking about, um, you know, what, what kinds of content was really engaging. One one of my favorite tools that I find really, really useful on Facebook is uh, the Insights. If you go to the main Insights dashboard, and then it gives you the little breakdown there in that column of uh, virality, and you can actually see uh, how each post that you did performed, how it went viral, what kind of reach you got as a result of it. And I have used that as a really, really useful metric to see what kinds of content are most engaging. Obviously, um, photos and videos tend to do the best. But I have also used it to keep my finger on the pulse of what kinds of conversations our audiences um, want to have and what types of you know, local activities in the community are going on that they're most interested in. And so to use that as a constant way to test and measure and then rinse and repeat and have that influence our content strategy, which is an entire matrix. Um, so th yeah, those are a few ways that I've, I've found to measure true engagement. Okay. And uh, Justin, do uh, you have any thoughts on... Uh... Oh, <coughs> that's a, it's a difficult one. Our engagement came from customer support. I guess that that's what I was saying before. Because yeah. any outreach that we did, our target market was... I, I think it existed on social networks. It was just too hard to find at that time. Uh, this was like maybe 12 to 14 months ago. So it's changed again, obviously, and we just haven't bothered or haven't had the resource to go back to it to be absolutely frank. Um, so yeah, it's, I don't know, social, social's a weird one because it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a bucking horse for me as well because it'll work one week and then it won't work the next week depending on whether the weather's good or there's a holiday or what the hell's going on like. There's too much flux, I think. We, we, we came across something the other day that was quite interesting and, and it crosses over to Boxing SEO box. slightly. You're getting close. I'm trying my best not to swear, man. Give me a fucking break. I see. Look. <laughs> Killing me here, Terry. Yeah. Okay, um, 
No, we found we found crossover one day there where where we took a drop in some stats in Norway, and we were trying to figure out what was going on because we'd launched a Facebook campaign in conjunction with with some uh, AdWords advertising, and we had pushed this whole thing out, but we hadn't checked the date, and it turns out that the seventeenth, which was just last month, uh, was National Constitution Day in Norway. Mm-hmm. So we, we we buggered it up by <laughs> by going too technical and just not checking the damn dates for that country. You know, no, it, we didn't lose money and we didn't suffer for it because it just rolled over until the next week. But it surely didn't have the same impact. And by God, you could see it in the in the graphs for the insight stuff on Facebook because it, it just hit the floor, and there was no activity because they were all off in the the Fords or wherever the hell Norwegians go for a good time. Yeah. Doing that, Norwegian stuff, they weren't on the internet interested in engaging and doing whatever we did. So balancing the real world side of it, man, against the the technical side is a major thing that we tend to forget sometimes. Especially especially over here in Europe, I think the states are a wee bit easier because it's kind of you know you've got your one date for everything. But state by state, there must be regional stuff. Um, but in terms of of actually finding influencers and and engaging the community. To be absolutely honest with you, we use Google Analytics to see what's happening and where stuff's being heard from. Uh, we don't tend to over-engage with, uh, with actual users because they, they just don't engage. That's the type of market yeah. that we're dealing with. Uh, we yeah. haven't bothered with B2B because we've just found it too time-consuming and too expensive. Um, and there's easier ways to reach that market. So social's just been a real pain in the hole for us, to be absolutely blunt. But a lot of your uh, stuff, Justin, is going through a franchise system too, right? So there, that, there's that, that on the end. Social is big on, should be big on their platters locally. Uh, Dude, whereas, that, that conversation is like trying to tell someone that, that how to set up an email account and you have to remind them that it's 2013 and they still can't fucking do it. <laughs> so, you know, Twitter and what's this and Vine and, uh, and Pinterest and, oh, I've got Facebook, but I, I don't really look at it. The kids use it. I just do it because the kids are on it. That's the type of age group that we're dealing with and the, and the businesses that we've got on board. And, you know, there's three 300 dealers in the network that, that these guys have worldwide. So I ain't fucking doing courses to try and train them and all that stuff, man. I, there's not enough hours in the day. Yeah. And because of the cross culture and cross language stuff, it's incredibly difficult to to bring them all up to a standard that you need while controlling the brand message that's going out. So again, you revert back to trying to do it in house, but you can't because you have to hire a, a, a nation of multilingual people in order to actually have the reach that you need. You know, yeah, it's just that's... it's insane. I just find it there's there's better channels that give a better result at a better price at this time. Um, and social, like we, like I said, social is great for us in terms of dealing with customers and customer support in a public way, which comes across great for the brand um, because we get seen to be dealing with the problems yeah. and sorting it out. That's what yeah. works. We okay, do the same, so just Now, uh, oh, sorry, did, did you have something to say, Hadel? You wanted to... I was just adding, we do the same. We use it a lot for that monitoring of customer um, happenings, things that they don't tend to call. We have a support line, we have 24-7, but they'll still, a lot of them will take to Twitter or Facebook like, oh, this piece of crap didn't work. And it's like, hey, did you reach out? And I'll I'll talk to our customer support team and say, look, did you get anyone with this name? I'll look up their, their user ID and say, look, you know, did you get a call from any of these folks? Are they just bitching to bitch or did they actually call in and want help with it or are they just one of those people that likes to complain? Yeah. Um, and, and we found, and we've actually found a few things through monitoring that were beyond sort of a customer support that would have blown up into much bigger incidences. But because we Absolutely. caught them and we reached out, it became a oh, thanks so much. We got to work with them. We got to take stuff offline that could have been a lot uglier. That's that's the type of publicity that you just can't buy. You can't you can't buy it. And then even when they do tend to go off like everything will send them like when we try to take it offline they put everything oh I'm gonna take everything you've sent me and put it on a tumbler well engaging with them and talking to them and getting them through it and sort of talking them off the ledge then they take it down so you know I, I, you can't, you can't I don't put ca- a I think actually even if you don't get them off the ledge and it still turns into a negative to be seen it, to talking talking yeah. with them is a massive positive in it any is. respect 
It because, is. Agreed. as we yeah. all probably have experience in some form or fashion, picking up the phone and phoning a company mm-hmm. and being passed around and told to dial one and move to number three and all put the right. whole movie there, you would love the world to be listening to that conversation. And yes. that's where Facebook works. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and specifically Facebook now, I'm not even talking about Twitter because yeah. we just don't, again, we don't have that, that reach. It's, it seems to be our generation that we're in tech I've used Twitter, but Twitter is a weird animal now. It's not the mm-hmm. same as what it was two years ago or even three years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and Facebook has stayed pretty consistent over the last while. Yeah. Um, so best publicity you can buy, man, be seen to be dealing with a problem. You know, and every you single that. one that we have found, we, we stopped one, which was probably going to be a lawsuit, would have been major egg in our face on Facebook. We dealt with mm-hmm. it, um, and it turned into a thank you. And it's amazing I still am stunned to this day how many people come in writing complaints the size of the Bible, you know, and, and by the time you're finished just walking them through it and being seen to deal with it, they're thanking you. Yeah. Sure, I wouldn't be bloody doing it. I wouldn't be saying thanks. If you've caused me a problem, I'm ready to knock right. you out. Right. Yes. You're creating you brand that, ambassadors. Uh, Brands, you yeah. You want to add something there? Or? Yeah, well, we, we've got some... Uh, uh, projects where we have some fairly significant haters and they seem to be pretty aggressive of being the first post to talk about how much whatever is crap and what's nice is we've evolved enough of a following to this point to where we almost don't have to engage those people anymore because the people that do like us jump all over them and that's also fun to watch because now we don't have to be the bad guy we don't have to come in and tell them why they're wrong or try to redirect the discussion. We just let our fans take care of it for us. Mm-hmm. And that Send in the us dogs. The hassle. Yeah. <laughs> and then we, all we have to deal with are, are actual legitimate complaints. And those are easy to deal with. It's it's the rabid haters out there that you just have to you have to yeah, they brand themselves, there. Steve. They kill themselves, mate. Because people get fed up listening to that type of fire and brimstone crap from the same people all the time. Yeah. Right. You know? In fact it's it's harder to change someone's opinion who likes you than that it is to listen to someone who dislikes you. Because if you've got someone on there ranting, you tend to just go, oh, what's this bollocks moaning about now? <laughs> Even if you find it funny or humorous or, or something, then most people, like you say, pipe up and say, calm down, will you? Leave us alone. You're just right. annoying everyone. Go away. Yeah. And that's that's great. That's great for business. It's great for brand. If you can get that. Yeah. You no, know, it's building. It's building that up. That's where the value is. If you don't like yeah, what we have so, to say, you can uh, go somewhere else. That's it. <laughs> Buy from somebody else. Get it somewhere else. Yeah. Don't complain to them. Mm-hmm. That's one way. In fact, uh, I was thinking that that would be a great business model to find all these trolls and hire them to go and annoy people, like all of them at once. <laughs> hire a troll. That's yeah. It. Oh, hang on! I'm going to get that domain. You got a new profession there. Uh oh, Black Hat Social. Yeah, if all of this stuff is like hire a blogger and do this, and you know buy that. Oh, just hire a troll, man. Troller, nice. Okay, Mark Tree. Uh, just uh, do you have any uh, successful uh, social campaigns that you'd like to talk about, where you could pass on some tips on how to use social? Uh, I found mainly for me. It's just another uh, discovery channel broadcasting. I never, I don't get all giggly when uh, someone uh, engages with something I've done. Uh, I think uh, I cannot imagine more of an annoyance than anything, Terry. to be quite honest. Uh, but uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I, I mean, I can I can definitely appreciate that, and I think that I have the benefit of not having been in the SEO industry long enough to be really jaded. Um, I mean, I'm I'm jaded, but I'm not like super jaded. I've only I've only been in it since 2008, um, which I think is a benefit uh, for for being on the social scene. Yeah, you be careful. Um, <laughs> so. I mean, I could talk about PPC or I could talk about organic. You know, I, I, I have worked with, you know, and, and Justin's right, you can obviously build a very, very good audience um, if you have the money. And I have built 
used Facebook PPC uh, to build a following of, you know, over 10,000 fans over the course of like three months. And it was a good audience. You know, we used good targeting and they were engaged, unfortunately, in that particular case. They didn't have the um, content resources to be able to support that uh, audience for long. But, um, but regarding the organic campaigns, you know, and, and again, I, I have a rather unique situation because I, I had the luxury of being in a house and being able to work very closely with the rest of our team. Um, but we have worked very, very hard at using our social tools as real, um, to, to get real engagement. And we actually have conversations with real people. Um, so on the property management side of things, we use our, our Twitter account as a customer service tool, absolutely, and also Facebook. We have a, a Facebook group set up just for our residents. Um, so if our residents say, you know, one of them locks themselves out of their building, then they can post in the Facebook group, and other people in their building will see them and come down and let them in. They can ask one another questions. So we found that that's a really good way to create engagement within our specific, you know, those, those very niche customer communities because another really important part of our brand is building community. You know, we're, we're trying to build that engagement in real life. So we found that things like Facebook groups are a really good way to do that. Um, we also... Sorry, Mark. Have you? Can I just ask if have you you work in a in a rental market? Is that you manage? A, of course. What is so, it exactly? Uh, really, right? Thank you for making me clarify. I get in my world a little bit too much, um, <laughs> and and forget that not everyone knows exactly what I do every day. Um, <laughs> so it's, yeah, so it's real estate. Um, so there's so there's development. Uh, we develop real estate, and then we also manage all of the properties that we develop. Um, uh, so it's a real property building organization type thing. The, the yeah, reason, no, sorry, I didn't. No, go ahead. I didn't want to interrupt. It's it's do do you use real events in in conjunction with the stuff that you're doing, or have you got to that stage yet where you've sort of went like block party? Let's all go. And to be completely honest with you, um, that is one of the tools that we have used, and we plan and we plan to make much better use of. We have had a really, really hard time getting actual engagement with people actually coming to a physical event that we host, despite the fact that our communities are within blocks of each other. Um, That's what I was asking. That's it's, really interesting, actually. It's so interesting, but on the other hand, we get an incredible amount of engagement online. You know, we have people who ask, who reach out to us specifically on Twitter, tweeting us saying, "Do you have apartments free?" We have residents who, you know, tweet us or, or Facebook us and you know tell us how happy they are to move in or they met their neighbors or or so and so. I mean, so we have actual, and that's to be quite honest. I mean, those are those are the kind of metrics that I look at. I look at numbers. I keep track of our insights and you know sure. our following growth, but. But those instances of actual engagement where people are talking to each other in real life in the digital space um, is, is how we measure success. Now, obviously, we're still facing the challenge of getting that engagement to translate into real life, um, which, is, which is more difficult than it seems. Yeah. Adele, do uh, you have anything you'd like to share in that regard? I'm sorry, was that a question for me? There we go. No, Adele, I've lost sound with Adele. No. Can't hear. Oh, how's that? Yeah, yeah. that's better. Okay. Um, with regards to um, outreach and different campaigns, I mean, we just try to do something consistent. Um, having consistency, the, the most effective things we've done, honestly, is to throw it back really old school and monitor and, and become active in forums. I mean, forums have been huge for our business. Um, and email. I mean, people still discount the use of really good email and really targeted email, which to me is, again, forums and email were the original social. And that is sort of lost on these new breed of social media people. It's like, look, these are good tools. Use them properly, and they'll work very well for you. Um, but what we tend to do is, because it's so content marketing heavy, um, we find the most success in connecting multiple pieces of uh, social content. So if we have a video, we'll put the video within the blog. We'll post that on Facebook that then links to the video that's on YouTube. The YouTube yeah. then links back to the blog. And you sort of create that little chain that brings people to all of them, so they all bring them back to the site. That's um, also how you can take multiple spots uh, right. in the SERPs as well. Uh, it's all about real estate there, and that's what we love. We own the top of the SERP using 
video and blogs. Uh, yep. And events, images. Especially, uh, yep. Can do incredible stuff. Yep. Uh, so to kind of, we're getting near the uh, end, so uh, just wanted to uh, ask, uh, what do you think, uh, as far as uh, uh, social and SEO goes, I got to ask this question. Uh, Wiss is probably already wincing because he knows <laughs> the, the way I, uh, I think about this. No, I didn't. Uh, I'm not a big believer <laughs> that social is a ranking factor. I'm more of a believer that it's a verification. In other words, uh, if you want to break into a universal search, you use the social to move the temporal signals to get your into the search. Uh, so as far as the ranking factor, no. But as a signal, yes. Uh, and since we all are kind of as much SEOs, the guests here especially, are as much SEO as social, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, start with Justin. I know he has a few uh, ideas on it as well. <laughs> He's an opinion. <laughs> um, social has fuck all to do with we ranking and that SEO. Word. Someone's coming over to slap you upside of the head. I bring it on. <laughs> Uh, no, it's got bugger all to do directly. It's great, yeah, announce something, you're doing something, push it out there. Um, the only reason that social can affect ranking for SEO in my experience is some way or other it will generate you links. Yeah, and Simple it's not that. really the links either. It's more about citations and stuff too. I yeah, think. citation links, whatever way you want yeah. to drum it down. But there, there is a but bit it's of a just, difference. It's... The citation is more of a mention. The, the... <clears throat> yeah, but I don't think I don't think the channel itself. I don't think Twitter and as Adele says earlier, Google hate them. Google Plus may have a good influence later. We're not sure. We all know sort of what's going on there, and that might have an effect, and we don't know. But there's no way a, a Facebook status update a Facebook offer, a Twitter tweet, uh, a retweet, or anything from any other third-party company, um, Google will not allow that to affect the rankings. That just, it wouldn't make sense to any business. I don't care. You know, it just doesn't make logical sense. So, yeah, it's a contributor, but it's not a direct influence at all. A direct uh, effect. Yeah, and the thing to remember is that uh, there are only very few parts of Twitter and Facebook that are actually even indexable, which any SEO worth his salt has already figured out that that's why those signals, not a big deal, because they're not indexable. If Google doesn't know about it, how can they use them? So uh, this Adele? question, question, I have a question. So you're saying that Google actually goes after and apply the robot.txt rules and abide by it? <laughs> Sorry, I mean, do, do you think that hope Google, they do or uh, Google, uh, Google, like what with AI. Twitter, with Twitter, uh, it'll actually go in and index every tweet, etc., etc., etc. That's that's why they read everything. Are. They probably are, but they just if it is if if it was the case that Google were using tweets and stuff to influence search, one they can't be found to be doing it because it would be massively detrimental to their their share price because they've said that it doesn't in such and such a way after their agreement expired with Twitter. Um, and I don't think, I think they could use it internally as some sort of gauge and signal, but I don't think it's applied in any form or fashion. Because it's simple to test. Pick a keyword, set up a website, throw 10 pages on it, and go and buy 50 million retweets on Viver.com. You won't rank. But, but let me ask you, you something. Rank. Did you ever see an actual hashtag search, a Twitter search hashtag actually ranking in, in the search results? Nope. No, oh, I'm seeing them a lot. Yeah, well, you, well, hashtag, I'm uh, saying I'm only uh, saying from Justin, experience. Uh, uh, with Sam, you should remember and, and take a look and, and do a little search. You'll find that hashtags, the robot text has been removed from the search. In, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, but this is not related to the to well, the one before. Well, it can't yeah. be indexed, sir. Mm -hmm. It can't be uh, part of the thing. That's the bottom. Oh yeah. Line. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
and let's hope that they're following robots tax because if they're not we're all aft good well time. let me let me let me let me ask you something you never landed on a page where they show the actual link and below it in the meta description they say oh we don't have a meta description for it because it it's included in the robot.txt. This actual URL it's is not blocked. Link pointing to a robot text yeah. page. Yeah. You never saw that? Here you go. Yeah. But that's different than a social signal. Sorry, I, I just don't know. Well, like uh, well. well, that's uh, for another time. Uh, Del, uh, <laughs> any, uh, do you agree with Wiss on that? Um, I, I can see both sides of it. The thing is, it may not be, Google may not be picking up for um, for ranking, but it's still watching click-throughs. So if it, you can see tweets within Google search results. If people are seeing that and they're clicking through, that is a signal. So while one may not be a signal alone, if there is other activity that that would be considered one of the 200 plus signals, and it you know and it is being found, it's being clicked on, it's being shared, it's being shared outside of just the Twitter stream. It's being put. People take tweets and they um, and they include them in regular blog content, and they include them on site content. And if people are taking that and they're putting it in and they're giving that right. any value on another platform outside of just Twitter, then yes, you can see that. So yeah. again, it's not ju it's it's just another way to distribute content. And if people are taking it and they're putting it into, let's say they're putting it into Tumblr, that. You're going to tell me that Tumblr is not going to become part of the new Yahoo algorithm when it comes to content being shared? I don't think they spent all that money for no reason. Well, it's got, they've already said uh, that uh, they're going to use Tumblr. They're going to actually uh, it's their blogger, take it's their blog from spot. Tumblr and mm -hmm. put it into Yahoo Sports and and mm -hmm. places where they're really weak. And mm -hmm. Tumblr is strong, like fashion. Tumblr. Right. Fashion is huge on Tumblr, right? Uh, and fashion on Yahoo is not so much. So, Yahoo's not very fashionable, no. Yeah, so <laughs> that's how they're going to use Tumblr. I actually saw a uh, uh, interview on CNBC between Marissa Mayer and uh, with the guy who owned Tumblr, and that's what they were saying, yeah. uh, basically. And they're going to probably lead Tumblr. Uh, arm's length. I'm a big Tumblr fan, like been on there for three, four years now posting and actually have my own domain there. Uh, so uh, is there anything, uh, tip or whatever that uh, y'all want to leave uh, with or is there any questions? Nobody wants no, to jump in? Um, no I would questions say coming on the hashtag or anything, I guess. Uh, so we're still trying to get an uh, audience for that sort of thing. Well, it'll come hopefully someday, especially, you know, uh, have enough personality and make it worth uh, listening. Right deal. So uh, any uh, last uh, thoughts from uh, Justin? Well, Facebook, man, make, make, uh, make good use of the special offers. Try them because they work. We have found them to, to kick ass for well, some reason. I, I don't know why people, it's the same old thing, old style marketing, people love a special offer. So create a special offer, you know, promote it in their people's streams, make it so that they have to take a voucher or get emails, some type of discount or bonus or, you know, make them feel special in some way or other and you will make sales out of it. There you go. A tip from the Justini. And uh, Marjorie, uh, anything from you? Uh... Closing thoughts. Well, I, you know, I think that it's really interesting that everyone is saying that they're not seeing um, SEO benefits, or that they, they, you know, don't really tie SEO benefits to social. Um, I tend to track things much more uh, qualitatively than quantitatively, um, and I, I don't get, you know, nearly as uh, as nerdy and technical in uh, in the SEO metrics as as I possibly could. Um, I. I correlate a large part of our, our SEO success to our heavy engagement on social, but it's not just social. You know, we use social really uh, as syndication as much as for engagement. Just remember the mantra for correlation does not equal. 
Causation. <laughs> so I so I will you're absolutely right. And that being said, with that as a qualifier Never um, tell Terry that. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Don't agree with me. Anyway, Steve doesn't like to see that. <laughs> so to disagree with you. Um, That's it. You would be just like Steve. Then. Right, right. So I did notice, I have to say, you know, there was one um, particularly competitive keyword, apartments plus our city name. I mean, the, the, the I Ching, the holy grail of keywords for our particular market, which, you know, rent.com and all of these huge aggregate sites typically dominate. So we were ranking somewhere around page two, page three. I added G plus author attribution to all of our articles online and offline, and we have multiple authors, so I hooked all of those up and all of our G plus personal profiles, LinkedIn, la la la. Within the next two weeks, we were in the top three spots. Yeah, well, that could be when you're logged in or whatever. Who knows? So. No, it was okay. with logs. I mean, well, I, I did my okay. test. Okay, yeah. Oh, Terry, right. be so cruel. <laughs> Pardon me? Don't be so cruel. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I, uh, so, just so remember, that's, that's all I just remember what, what you're saying, though, is that at a local level, Right, it's different than, than going for the term apartments. You know, the universal term apartments at right. a local level. Um, that could go on because what what Wissam put up there is a link to the hashtag Beirut, which was which is really funny because I've never if I type Syria or Jerusalem or any any Middle Eastern place that's in the news majorly at the moment. I thought it was having something to do with the mentions of the place or whatever. I can't find any other hashtag search result. So at a local level, you'll more likely get hashtag and social stuff appearing mm -hmm. at a local level, mm -hmm. which could influence you on local search and the Venice stuff a hell of a lot more. So there's two levels to it as well. Or right, maybe I, I yeah. wasn't being you clear. You have to we're, remember we're also uh, in social, half, half you get a lot of nice uh, uh, citation verification, which to me is huge, bigger than links now. I, that's what I've come to. Uh, the conclusion. Uh, I agree. I, I would agree with that too. I mean, you have to look at who your market is. I mean, if you're if you're going widespread and you're international, then if you don't have the placement within individual countries or whatever it is that you're selling or promoting within that country, you're not going to get it whether you use a lot of social or no social. Um, but I, I I can see the correlations as well um, between our promoting via social and then seeing when people take content and they carry it to their channels again going back to say the community managers or people that are active um, within social communities if they're taking content that we're creating and they're spreading it through theirs I am seeing boost within traffic I see a boost within search rankings but then again that could be that could be attributed to click through yeah you know it, it it, maybe it doesn't matter where it's shared. It's just that it's being shared. It's getting picked up, and you're getting click through. Click through is a signal. So while social may not be the signal, it could be one of the other 200 factors that's getting picked up that's bringing it back. Um, but I, my my one takeaway is, I wouldn't I wouldn't say social's nothing. Run away, let it go. It's not worth it. I think that we do need to continue to diversify efforts, and this is just another effort, another tool in the kit that you have to put some time into it not a lot but some and if you do start to see more value put a little more time if you don't see the value then steady as she goes but you've got to try it out you've got to put some some time into it to see if it does give you any return on that on that investment totally I would add one more thing to that, um, which would be to really pay attention to and invest in the quality of your content that you're sharing. You know, if you don't have good content that is targeted to your audience, that is providing value, that is interesting and engaging, that that can be a successful launching pad for people to have a conversation from, then you're just basically shouting, you know, ads through a microphone. Mm -hmm. um, so. I, to me, that's the most important metric to keep your finger on um, in terms of engagement is what are people interested in talking about and then talk about that, spark that conversation. And, you know, and then your followers, your engagement, your metrics, um, you don't have to worry about those so much because what you're doing is, is you're building um, brand authority, obviously. Okay. So uh, is there any questions from 
any of the guys here, uh, Gab's uh, watching the chat here. I don't see anything. Uh, just trying to think of, uh, you know, how we can kind of end this on a good note. Uh, can I can I finish it on a good note by recommending everyone goes and buys a little Lego man yes. and sticks it on top of your camera when you're doing a hangout because then you can speak to him and it's a lot more natural. <laughs> um, preferably one that kind of looks like yourself. That's funny. So he sits up there now and I speak to him and it makes he's it look like I'm actually you. having a chat. <laughs> Yeah, he's a wee pissy because you're sitting in red hair. You're sitting in an empty everything. office, apparently. You could buy a bunch of them and sit them up top, like ten of them. That way yep. it would actually be the number of people in the hangout. I'm going to get one that's Terry. Can they have a wee Viking sword? <laughs> I think they look have angry all the time. Already. You, could, you could go just get like a Gimli Lego man, right? <laughs> there you go. You need some troll Lego men as well. Don't forget yep. the trolls. <laughs> There you go, Terry. We're finished on a high note. Yeah, that's for sure. Okay, so... Now go make lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I do end this one like that, too, Justin. You'll see. Hang oh, on. I was Just, hoping to slip Justin, that. Steal your, steal your finishing part, words. The way I end a, a show. So, uh, since uh, there are any more comments from the uh, guests here? Okay, then. I guess... Uh, that's uh, got pretty close to an hour for you this week, folks. We're kind of debating whether we're going to change things up a bit here. Uh, next week, I don't think there will be a show because I'll be at SES Toronto. And, uh, unless I can do the interviews and stuff from there, uh, it's going to be a rough go. So, uh, say goodbye, Justin. <laughs> Terry says, go make lots of money. <laughs> and Marjorie, nice to meet you and uh, introduce you to the community. And Yeah, it's been a pleasure. And thank you so much again to Gabby for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Okay, thank you. And Adele, any? No, nothing to add. Uh, I've enjoyed it very much. Thanks so much for having me. And can't wait to um, see you guys at the next one, not next week, but week after. Uh, thanks a lot. Enjoy your vacation. We, uh, Thank we you. appreciate uh, all the uh, uh, appreciation. <laughs> I guess that's what I, the word I was looking for. So to end this, I'll just say to all the fine folks out there, go make lots of money.